Hi, now this video, I want to talk to you today about a new innovation in Envivo, uh, available now in Envivo 15, which has just been released in the last couple of days. Um, the, the version I'm showing you here today is Envivo 15, but if you've been using Envivo 14, which, which has been kind of released about 18 months ago, or in Vivo 2020, released in March 2020, sometimes referred to as version 13, sometimes referred to as R1. Um, but if you've been using any of those versions, that interface is going to look exactly the same. But there is one additional piece in Envivo 15 that doesn't exist in those other two. So the new innovation is AI Assist. I've been able to harness the power of those large language models like Gemini, ChatGPT, um, Copilot, the various, they all have their own, all these, you know, all the large platforms like Google, Microsoft, they all have their own versions of this. Um, <clears throat> and to be fair, you could always use those language models with Envivo. I mean, if I wanted to write the summary of something, particularly if I'm doing something with public information like a literature review, um, I could get it to write a summary of a, of a, you know, a publication. The difference this time is large language models have created some ethical challenges in the past. Uh, because obviously you can do this with public information like social media, like literature. Um, but you can't, you couldn't do it ethically with interviews or any kind of primary data, for example. And the two barriers to that was A, putting it on the internet, private data, and B, that it was instructing the model. It was, a, it was instructing the, uh, the AI, and that was being used to feed in further queries. And the difference now with this is that this is now built into Envivo. It doesn't instruct the model, and it doesn't leave anything on the server at all. So ethically, that gets over that barrier and you don't ever have to leave in vivo you, you can do it right in here in in your vivo database so that's a big a big innovation and potentially uh, very helpful there are some limitations to what these things can do as well they're not going to be a substitute for a researcher or for analysis or the human input that's required because no llm has your you know your your lived experience as a human being and as a professional uh, they didn't do your literature review. So they don't have any of the kind of contextual backgrounds that you draw on, even subconsciously, when you're analysing a piece of data. So the limitations of what it can do are, it can write good summaries, and it can suggest descriptive codes. So that's the extent of it, but that's not to be sn uh, sniffed at. When I say descriptive codes, in, if you're in an environment like academia, publishing, um, most of the methods that are typically applied to qualitative data analysis, discourse analysis, content analysis, grounded theory, phenomenology, template analysis, thematic analysis, reflexive thematic analysis, all, all of these methods would have at least three stages to that process of analysis and coding. And the, t the early stages tend to be descriptive. But in the secondary coding, this is where you start to bring in your own experience as a human being, as a professional. You start to interpret the data. So you ask me in an interview if I take risks and I say, no, I never take risks. That's what my descriptive code is going to say because that's what I said. But later on, maybe when I'm answering an entirely different question, I go on to describe perfectly risky behavior that I don't perceive as risk. But you're the expert the expert on risk, you've read the literature. So you might call me there to, you know, to awareness of risk, lack of awareness of risk, you know, a more interpretive code. Um, and I may not fully get as a participant why I'm being coded there. There's no large language model can do that. And final coding is, you know, it's analytical coding. You're now going from, you know, you know you're now engaging the data at a much higher intellectual and analytical plane. You're now engaging with theory, policy concepts you're in a much wider arena so the ai tools can get you past the first stage but not the second and third 
So just to show you in the software what it does, the, um, the, the, the data I'm using is the standard tutorial that gets shipped within Vivo. So you will have this a copy of this automatically if you if you have in Vivo. Uh, you can generate one. So you can try this at home if you want to copy the steps. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get it to write a summary of Barbara's interview. So this is the standard environmental changes down east that you'll see in all our videos and all the Lumivero videos and online courses, etc. So um, I'm going to right click on Barbara and I'm going to do, that's an interview, and I'm going to do AI Assist Summarize the Document. And it's going to generate this. Now I have three options here. I can do short, standard, or long. I'll do the long so you can see it does quite a, a, a good job. I can do this as well for several documents. Um, I can generate this now, and there's my summary. Now I can add that as a memo. And that's it, the job is done. It's now read that entire interview and written a summary. Now I'll open up Barbara. You can see the interview, it's, you know, it's lengthy enough. And then I'll do Control, Shift, and M, or right-click Memo Link, Open Linked Memo. And I get what I've just seen. And you can edit this now. You can summarize it, um, change the text, add something that you feel it's missed. But you have a nice, neat summary there. And in almost all of these methods, what researchers are trying to do is reduce the data to more manageable proportions. You know, as humans, we can only take in so much information and a common enough problem in qualitative data analysis is having too much of it. So these could be steps that you could do to at least break down codes or break down interviews into more manageable proportions. And then uh, your time is spent in a more productive environment where you're actually you know, getting to the heart of the matter at a more strategic level than just reading through reams and reams to come up with something that will be quite similar to this probably at the end. So um, you can do that. Now I will make this project, I will make this um, thing down, downloadable if you want to try it. You will have to have um, in Vivo 15 to be able to open the file. If you want to just see what it's produced in some detail, you wouldn't have time to read the whole thing out here in a video but it, we will make it available and um, now one caveat as well with AI assist is that it's not it doesn't come shipped with it version 15 it's an add-on it's a module it's a paid module it's a subscription and it's about 200 well we paid about 270 quid for a one year subscription so it is it is expensive enough and it doesn't just come automatically. I think when you get the version 15, if you don't order the AI Assist when you're actually buying the software, um, it will give you a certain amount of freebies and you can run them and see what it like. But then if you want to, you, when, you, when you've used those, it will then ask you to, um, to, do you want to subscribe before you do any more? So that is one thing. And another thing you could do, if I've broken down Barbara into broad brush or early stage codes, I'm going to go down here to my codes and I can tell, tell it to suggest subcodes. So if I've done some auto coding, say by structure and style, and I've pulled out all the elements of my discussion, this is where we talk about the natural environment, this is where we talk about the economy. And, you know, for any of these things like environmental change, I can right click on it now and do AI assist suggest child codes. Now these will be descriptive codes, but I'll show you what it does. I'm going to tell it to generate the codes here to break this down into its constituent parts. You can see that there's 14 documents in there, 42 comments, so it's it's quite big and it's doing it there now and it's done it. So it lists out the codes here, which I can accept or reject if I say, okay, don't give me that one. Um, and if I click on any of the codes, it'll show me the quotes that it's actually putting in to support that. And again, you could uncode or remove some of these. And if I'm happy with that, then, and I can choose more context if I wanted, like give me the whole paragraph, just give me the, the quote that you have here. That's the coding reference. So you can choose how much data to code as well. And then um, if I say, okay, 
it's now generated those codes. Now again, you can see all the comments that it's done there, change in community and landscape, construction, development, environmental. Now I might decide, again, this is the human intervention, I might decide development pressures and construction, they need to be merged as codes. So I can do that. I, I've got complete control over this. Uh, I can just say merge those two together and I think that would make more sense. So I can review both the content and the structure. How much I can see how much data these various codes have brought. Um, and I can then decide, well, look, that's that's got really nothing in it. I'm just going to get rid of that. Made a code, didn't find any comments to put in. So I now have my codes. I can weight them. I can see, well, the common environmental change from our participants' perspective was pollution and construction. And then I could get it to uh, write a summary. Now, it doesn't write the summary of a code. It writes the summary of a document. But there is a cheat sheet that I did. I'm not sure if I should be doing this, but I did it. Um, if I open up environmental changes, the reason it can't write is because there's multiple documents coded here. And it's trying to suck bits from them all. So you can see there, you know, there's a lot of comments. Now, I did this already with pollution impact today. I first coded it on, but then I wanted it to write a summary memo. So I copied and pasted this into a document in the interviews. Now, obviously I would have this in practice. I would have it in a different folder. You know, I would be putting these in as code documents, if you like, but there it is, pollution impact. And there I could get my AI assist to write a summary, which I did. I then attached that memo to the code, which is in here. And if I do control shift and M, you'll see the memo. A memo link, link to new memo, or open link memo. And there's my memo summarizing all of this. Now, if I you read those codes and you read this, you'll see it, it isn't bad. It's a, it's a pretty good summary. We haven't gone into the high analysis uh, level analysis the interpretive aspects, looking at language, culture, all the nuanced things that human researchers do when they're looking at qualitative data. And we haven't thought about literature, bringing it back to theory and all of that. But as a first step for coding, the descriptive code that almost every every process, uh, every method would have you do, that's pretty good. It's certainly better than the AI and machine learning tools that have been built into Invivo up to now. This is definitely a big innovation, it's a big step forward. And I'd be the first to criticize overuse of technology and the over-reliance on it, um, and understanding the philosophy behind the method that you're doing. But if you do understand those things, then you could see that for the first, for the descriptive stages of coding, your time would now be spent looking through these comments, reading these summaries, not forensically going through and descriptively coding every time someone mentions ag agriculture. So your time is spent in an intellectual pursuit rather than a, an administrative task. So that's probably about it in terms of what it can do, but that's not more, that, that's a lot. And it's not to be, uh, to be stiffed at. So um, you would have to get in Vivo 15 and you would have to subscribe to this, to the AI model. But uh, all that said, I think for 200 euros, dollars, you know, odd, it's not that much more. I think it was two twenty seven something around that. Um, it's not. It's, it's value for money, I think. And eventually, these things will get better and better as the development of AI continues. And I'm sure it'll be more integrated into the version as time goes by as well. But uh, at the moment, that's the way it stands. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. And um, if you like all of these things, if you want to uh, contact me, I'll put the email address there on the screen now. You can, if you have any questions or concerns, if you want to download the project, um, or you can. Um, if you don't mind, if you think this is helpful, please like and subscribe. And until the next time, take care. Bye-bye.